This week, I'm gonna pick two molds and pop them together. So let's pick them out. I wanna pick two small ones. So I think this one and this one. Let's go. Hello, my name is Shelby and I'm a potter. I found this bowl lot of slip casting molds and one by one I'm pouring them up to reveal whatever is inside and then finish it into an artwork. This is the mystery mold series. So let's see what's in today's episode. I have had a few of you actually challenge me to try doing a collage of sorts with two brand new mystery molds. So it's kind of like Frankensteining two molds together and brainstorming this idea around it. So I thought this concept would be perfect for those pieces that are a little too small to just do one thing for. So I'm going to do a couple of these where I pick a couple of smaller molds and try and put them together. I'm going to open these two. I'm going to do the small one first because it has six holes. <gasps> I'm nervous because I have to patch these two together and I hope it's not a tricky task. <gasps> My goodness, the tiny little thimbles. <gasps> oh, they're so cute. Each little tiny thimble has a little motif on it this one's my favorite it's got little flowers on it then we've got a heart one a rabbit one i think that's a windmill a little scenery and then we've got a clover and a christmas tree that is really really cute i feel like these could be great little tea charms i've made tea charms before even cute little earrings as well i guess they would serve the purpose as a thimble uh, but i'm just thinking creatively of like what other uses could we do with these so that is the first one how can i attach it where can i attach it maybe they can be tiny little hats so it says to remove first so i'm assuming that you remove that part first now this one's a little bit broken so it's gonna get a bit stuck on where it's sort of leaked. Are you ready? I'm, not, I'm a bit nervous because I'm scared to attach and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to think creatively enough about how to make this work, but let's have a look. <gasps> they're koalas! They look like they're hugging a branch. <laughs> it's holding onto the mold with dear life. It's like, please don't attach me to a thimble. This is the second native Australian animal we have found. It looks like it's hugging, like you could make it hug a mug. I think it's a bit too big for some things that I'm thinking of. Oh, how am I gonna make these work? I'm actually a bit stuck. I love the koalas so much, but the koalas are a little bit tricky because of their shape and the way they're sitting. I will say that I kind of find this mold design a little bit annoying because the mold line goes straight through their face. The design of a mold, I would rather the design go through a less critical part that you can kind of make patch up, but it makes it a little bit more evident that the mold seam line is there because you're trying to fix up a face as well. It is really cute though. You know what? I'm looking at these arms and I'm wondering whether we could make the koala hold a thimble and then we could turn it into like a little planter. Oh, that is so cute. I mean, the designs are gonna be upside down. Maybe if I put the design side that way, it's kind of a shame to hide the design, but at the same time, it would mean that I could put my own work on there. It's almost perfect, a perfect fit. I was literally on the verge of tears after finding another native animal and that being a smaller koala. These two kind of work so perfectly together as the arms are already sort of reaching out in this nice hugging position, like it's about to hug a branch, but it also works perfectly with the thimbles because they are the perfect size and shape and they've got that lip as well. So it kind of looks like a terracotta pot. I would have loved to utilize the design on each of these but because they were going to be upside down it would have just been a bit like you'd be turning your head to try and look at the design which is still cute and I guess you'd be like oh it's a thimble rather than a pot plant but I think for me I was trying to go for more of like a planter aesthetic rather than being like obvious that it was a thimble like I'm trying to disguise it although I think utilizing the design would work really well here is a look at both those molds in case you're looking for any of them so we've got the collector's thimbles from 1977 I wonder if there's more thimbles that go with this like whether 
of those different collectible pieces like that have different designs on them and here is the koalas as you saw before I do not like how the mold actually goes together I mean sometimes you have to have those extra parts but it's so annoying that it goes straight through the face there's just other places where you could put that mold seam line that would mean that you get a better result from the piece it was yeah very tricky to clean up to make sure that that seam line was completely removed but yeah I just uh, it was just really tricky to make a decision about where to place the thimbles but at the end of the day I was like well I kind of want to do my own design on these and really utilize the shape and lean it into the koala a little bit more because I feel like the koala is more of the hero than the actual thimble. Sorry little thimbles. I did keep the flower design on that one thimble that had that. The reason for that was because it didn't look like it was upside down. It just looked like it was part of the piece. So with these koalas I wanted them to be very bright and kitschy. Surprise surprise. I am back at my old tricks and doing some fun vibrant flowers on them and I wanted to use the colors within the pattern I do on them to use as their features so such as their little ear fluffs their noses and their mouths this is because I didn't want it to be super contrasting and I just wanted it to feel like the patterning was like just part of their fur I must admit that this artwork was one of those times where I was going oh is this gonna come together like is this gonna be just weird like is it weird that I've just covered this koala in patterns or is this kind of cool I don't know and I was really starting to question myself I will say that I had done the green one the blue ones and the orange ones before I did the pink ones but as I was doing them I couldn't help but feel like the bucket looked like something familiar like <laughs> <laughs> it really reminded me of the little KFC buckets so I couldn't get past it so when I got up to the pink one I decided to lean into it and do like the red stripes on it but to change the emblem to a little koala head and instead it's like a koala fied cup or a koala flower cup or something like that instead of the Kentucky Fried Chicken I just couldn't help myself I didn't realize that it looked so much like a bucket until I started painting the other ones and I just yeah I went all in for that but yeah I was just really unsure whether this is just gonna look like I just shoved some flowers on it or whether it would look really cohesive or whether it was weird I don't know it's just feeling a little bit worried and I say that a lot but sometimes I'm just unsure of whether what I'm doing is going to work because this week I didn't have a plan point in case of the koala flower cups I just was going with the flow and just seeing what would come together but that feeling of uncertainty and unsure of whether it was going to work was totally valid and I'm so glad it happened because once I pushed through I just felt so relieved that I kept going at it and that I kept adding to it and especially once I painted that thimble it just all came together and I was so so happy with how they were looking they just I think sometimes I am so busy painting the patterns and trying to get all that color on I actually always kind of do the faces last because they're the last sort of detail that wraps it up and sometimes when they don't have their faces they look really ghost like and I'm unsure if it's actually going to look good but once that face kind of goes on it just brings everything to life instantly and it just sort of eases all my nerves and worries about whether the piece is going to look good I think that that's why I was feeling unsure because for a really long time they just felt a bit lifeless and like I had added all this detail and it wasn't really going anywhere and I should have just trusted it I need to always trust what I'm doing and know that it's gonna turn out fine and if it doesn't it's very entertaining still because I'm filming it and it's not just a personal journey I'm sharing it on the internet and that is yeah we're going on that journey together I think that the koala shape itself is very adorable very cute I feel like I could attach it to some handles it was rather heavy and a bit awkward for adding onto handles I also brainstormed the idea of it being like a phone holder as well as like a paintbrush holder but nothing really worked that well it's kind of a little bit too close and too short the arms are a little bit too close and too short for anything significant so I think that this thimble actually ended up being the perfect use for this piece if I'm being honest because I just don't know how else I could utilize these koalas other than them sitting on the bench and just 
being an open armed koala. They kind of remind me of the little koala souvenirs that we have in Australia and they're like got magnets in their paws so that they can actually clip. They're like little stuffed koalas and they clip onto your clothes. They look like they're fashioned after those souvenirs a little bit. The thimbles are really cool too. I'm not a sewer so I don't or an embroider? What what do you use a thimble for? Some kind of fabric work? Oh my gosh, I need to look up what you use a thimble for. But to stop the needle from pricking your finger, I, I don't know what makes a good thimble. What makes a good thimble? Would these even work as good thimbles or would these be more collectible pieces like it says on the mold itself? So yeah, let me know if you use a thimble and if these look like they're gonna be good ones. Okay, I did a brief read on thimbles and the pottery versions are more collectible then they are useful and that is what I kind of thought is because I figure everyone's fingers are kind of different and it doesn't really meld to your finger like a leather thimble would but they are still really cute and I wonder why thimbles became a collectible thing like it's just I talk about this every time but it's so random the stuff that we as people are like I'm going to collect this I find it so interesting anyway they're not the best thimbles so maybe it's perfect that I have used them for this type of pottery piece not necessarily working with them as just plain thimbles I do still think that they would look really cute as some little dangly earrings I don't know what else you could really use them for maybe their own little collector piece but if you wanted to make them more purposeful than just a sort of collector's piece I think that I've really sort of nailed this one I, I don't know, I think it was just meant to be that these two pieces went together. So I pack them into the kiln and pop them on overnight and here is what happened. Okay, it's time to open the kiln. Oh my gosh, they're so sweet. Oh, look at the colors, they look so good. Because they're so small and the sun is so bright now because we're starting to reach daylight savings time, I will just pull all of these out to start with and then we'll have a closer look in the filming shots I do over on the table because yeah, they're just so small. I can't really show you with the lighting. I love it when I have weeks where I can't really see the end product or I'm sort of just going with the flow and seeing what will happen with the piece because they are always the most delightful surprises at the end. I love every single one of these and I love how they all look together. I thought I would go out into my spring garden and get some of the daisies and flowers that are blooming in my front garden and make up these tiny little flower bouquets to put in the thimbles. I even got some little succulents to put in that little cracked pot. These just feel like a staple in my collection to me because I'm already doing the koala posy pots that are my original designs that I slip cast. I just feel so confused connected and the, these pieces just belong here. I think that the thimbles really elevate the koala to a more purposeful use as well as the koala adding to the thimble. It's like a symbiotic relationship. I really, really love it. They all look so, so adorable. Their little happy faces look like, look at my flowers, look at the flowers I've got. And these work so, so great for any kids in the house that want to go out and pick some daisies and pop them on display on a windowsill. I always love pieces that can be little display pots for tiny little flower friends. I'm really happy with these pieces. I shouldn't have doubted myself, but these ones have really blown me away and just have so much cute whimsy about them. I am just thrilled with the finished results. I hope you like them too. I would like to say another thank you for watching this week's mystery mold reveal. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more and to stay in the loop for these videos. And here is your sneak peek for the next reveal.